4K, 6K, 8K, and even 12K cameras are all the rage. But what if you take that footage, you throw it in your system over there, your computer to edit with, and you have choppy playback? Well that's where you're going to be glad you found this video today because I'm going to show you how easy it can be to start editing video faster and smoother on any computer using DaVinci Resolve 17 and a technique that's as old as computer based video editing itself. Let's dive in and learn all about proxy media and offline editing plus a few other great little tips and tricks I'm going to show you towards the end so make sure you stick around let's get into it. We're over here in DaVinci Resolve 17. I've got footage from a Canon R5, a C200, GH5, Sony a7 III. And to show you quickly what we've, we're working with, on the Canon R5, we've got in the inspector, you can see this is H265 422 footage. And it fits a lot of stuff into a small container, which is great. That's one thing that's awesome about H265. Bad thing, it's super hard on computers to play back. And to prove that, well, over here in the edit page, and I'm kind of moving around my, my playhead, and you see it takes forever for the um, the viewer to update. If I hit play, okay, I've hit play, and it took over two seconds for the playhead even to start thinking about playing back. If you look up here, it's telling us about 17 frames a second, which I think is generous. I think it's actually less than that. One thing you can always try, and it's been around for a long time, if you do have a faster-ish computer, is you can go to playback, timeline proxy mode and choose something like quarter resolution. What this will do is it'll dynamically, uh, the playback engine of Resolve is gonna drop the resolution while it's playing back. And it, it's kind of lying to us here because it is. it says it's playing 2398. It's it's not really, because we can see it's, it's just skipping all over the place. And the next thing I wanna show you is actually how to create proxy media files, which are gonna work great on any system. So now to generate proxy media files, meaning we're going to actually create new files, we're going to jump down here to the project settings, we're going to go to master settings, and then we're going to scroll down until we get to optimize media render cache. Under here we're looking at a couple of things. We've got proxy media resolution and proxy media format. We've got a lot of options here for media resolution. You can obviously choose original or make them smaller based off of these fractions. I've actually found that choose automatically is the way to go. If you say choose automatically, what that does is it makes your generated proxy files the exact same resolution as whatever your selected timeline is set to. Proxy media format, you have a lot of options here too. So there's H.264, H.265 if you're going to send it out over the internet like Frame.io or some sort of digital thing. And then we have ProRes and DNxHR. ProRes are sort of the Mac edit friendly codecs and then DNxHR are like the Avid or a PC, you can choose any of these, they're all gonna work great. Just know that from the top down, it's the highest quality to the lowest quality settings. And because these are proxy files and we're not actually gonna finish with them, choose the lower quality one. So I've been using ProRes 422 Proxy, which makes the smallest file, ProRes file you can make on here. Anyways, you click ProRes 422 Proxy, that's a great one to choose. And then, uh, and then you're going to be making ProS 422 proxies that are chosen automatically, but because I have a 1080p timeline set up in my master settings up here, you can see 1080p, it's going to make 1080p proxies. And then we're going to look at proxy generation location. This is going to just be where you set the proxy media files are actually going to live. So if you click browse, it lets you pick a location on your disk where they're going to be. So let's click save. And now that we have all of that set up, we're actually gonna make some proxy files. And to do that, we are gonna jump over to the media page. In the media page here, I'm gonna close the inspector so we can see a little bit more. There's one more setup thing that you can do. If you click this list view, we can actually add columns to see if we have proxy files and where they're located. If you right click anywhere in this column area and you check the box for proxy and proxy media path, what that does is it gives us uh, another list here to let us know if we have proxy files for those, you know, for those clips. So these are those R5 clips. If I double click, I can load them in, and it'll tell us the media path where they're actually stored. So these actually have none. So let's quickly go ahead and, and create some. This is what you've been waiting for. So the way you do this is in the media pool, for some reason I can't seem to do this in the cut page. In the media pool, right, uh, select them all, right click, and then it's as easy as going up and saying, generate proxy media, here it goes. So what Resolve is doing right now is it's taking that H.265 stuff that's hard to edit, it's making ProRes proxy as a completely separate video file that's gonna live in the background. Speaking of proxy files, what did the raw video say to the misbehaved proxy video? You're not out of line, 
you're offline. Now that it generated those proxy files, we can see under proxy it has resolutions for those proxy files. And because these were DCI 4K, it brings them to 2048 by 1080. The way we work with them is you go to playback and you say use proxy media if available. You make sure that is checked. Now that that's checked, uh, we are going to have really a smooth experience working with any of these clips. And we have proxy media path, so that's going to show us where they're located. So if I jump over to Finder, this is the source clip um, from the R5. It's 285 megabytes. Here is the ProRes proxy version of it. And under here, we'll see that made a 50.5 megabyte file. The original was 285. So it does make more media, but it's significantly smaller. So now if we hop back over to that edit page and see this footage that we were looking at before, because we have playback, use proxy media if available checked. Let's try playing it back. Look at that. We're not missing a single beat. It's locked in at 23976 up here. It's just it's plain buttery smooth. And I had already set proxies for some of this other footage. This blue stuff here is C200 footage. We can see that's playing fine. Here's like slow motion footage from a GH5. That's playing fine. But you can kind of see there's a big difference as I just kind of scrub with my uh, my mouse, the playhead, it's a much different experience. It's way less frustrating. Every single time it hits across a frame, the viewer up here is showing me that frame. If I were to switch back to playback and turn use proxy media off, which disables that, all of a sudden it is as stuttery as I'm talking right now. It is not good at all. Real quick, I want to call a timeout and say welcome if you're new here. I really appreciate you. Uh, my name is Chadwick. This is Creative Video Tips where I'm helping you create videos that make a difference and stand out. If that's the kind of thing you're into, click subscribe right down below so you don't miss out on my tip next week. With that out of the way, I'm going to get into next about how you can use proxy files that you created inside your camera while you were recording, or maybe a buddy created them outside in another application. You can link those up here in Resolve as well. So let's check that out. So a lot of cameras can actually record a sub recording format or a proxy format in camera at the same time as your source footage. Now this is Sony a7 III footage that I recorded proxy footage in camera with, um, but I don't have it linked yet. So you can see it's kind of jerky, it's stuttery as I scrub through the timeline here with my mouse. To link them up, you just go to your media page, select them all, you right click and you can just say link proxy media. And underneath here, we're gonna go back and I'll show you this right here, in-camera proxy. This is what a camera card structure looks like off of a Sony camera. And if I click on M4 root clip, these are the um, these are the big files and under sub, these are actually the proxy files that created in the camera. So I didn't have to do anything extra on the computer to make these. So you click sub, click open, and boom. All of a sudden we see we have 720p proxy media files ready to work with. We jump back to the edit page and we have buttery smooth playback because what we're actually looking at here is those proxy files, those low res versions that the camera had made. And we control that underneath playback, use proxy media if available. Just make sure that is checked. Now, if someone had made proxy files on another system, you would basically do the same workflow. You would select all your clips in the media page. You would right click and then say link proxy media and you would point it to where those proxy media uh, files are located at. So I know for this instance, I have proxy media is already created for, for these clips, and I'll just click into the folder where they're all gonna be at. I know they're in this folder here, so I'll click open, and it matches them up. So if you're making proxies in another program, you wanna make sure that they have the exact same time code, that they have the same file name, that they have the same frame rate, and that also that they are formats or codecs that Resolve supports. Now just a quick disclaimer, you want to make sure you are on DaVinci Resolve 17 because generating proxy media is a new feature they had just added. Another big benefit to generating proxy files and using ProRes proxy as you edit is actually when you're exporting your rough cuts and you're down to that last minute with your client and you've got that phone call for that meeting, you go to your deliver page here and you scroll down and you go to advanced settings and there's a checkbox here called use proxy media. 
And this is going to actually let you export your video way faster than you would have if not, because if this is not checked and it's not checked by default, it's going to use your original media, which is obviously it's harder on the computer to work with. So it's going to take longer for it to export your video. So as long as you're not showing them a color grade or you know some sort of finished work and you're just sort of showing some rough cut stuff, make sure you go over here to deliver page and say use proxy media it's going to give you you know it'll be a lower quality version of a video but it's going to kick out much faster so it lets you work down to that last minute which a lot of times we need to be doing once you're done with your project you might want to save some hard drive space by deleting the proxy files and there's no way to do it inherently right within the program so the way you're going to do it is you select them just like we had linked the files before you're going to right click and you're going to say unlink proxy media. Now this didn't actually delete them. It just removed them from sort of the memory of Resolve thinking that there should be something there. Because we know where we had saved them at, we'll go back to our finder and you actually have to go into your finder for your proxy clips. Make sure you're not going to your source clips. Go to your, you know, your proxy. So I had proxy media stored into here and you would just select them and then move to trash and then empty your trash. So you have to kind of delete them the old school manual way. So for the bonus tip, it's a shorty, but really a goodie. It's new in Resolve 17, and it's gonna free up a lot of RAM to help speed up your system. So most of the time when I'm editing, I'm gonna send something to client. Maybe I'll send version three, um, and they're gonna send me notes on version three, but I'm gonna keep working. So I'm gonna say duplicate timeline, and I'll, you know, I'll rename this, this will be version four. And I'll start working from version four. So when I get notes back, I'm always referring to version three that they left my notes on. The problem with having a lot of timelines in Resolve is it loads all these into RAM all the time. The way you can fix this and they just add is if you select them and then right click, you can actually say disable timelines. And by doing that, they're still here. We can go back to them, but to manually load them back in, you would have to right click it and say enable timeline to work on it again. So if you disable the timeline, this instance right now, I've only got two timelines that are loaded into RAM. The system's gonna have a lot more RAM to work with and just speed things up. So now you have no excuse but to edit great video using the computer you already have. If you got something out of this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you wanna learn more about DaVinci Resolve, editing faster, smoother, there's a playlist that's popping up right over here. Uh, I've got so many tricks and tips to teach you. So I'll see you over in that next video.